hello students welcome to engineers academy do hit the subscribe button if you are here for the first time now we are going to solve this problem again but with the second method i have already solved this problem uh, using the cross product method for finding the moment about point a now we are going to use the scalar product method to find the moment about point a so again the problem says that the 6 meter boom AB has a fixed end A. A steel cable is stretched from the free end B of the boom to a point C located on the vertical wall. If the tension in the cable is 2.5 kN, determine the moment about A of the force exerted by the cable at B. So I have solved this, ma uh, this problem by using the cross product method. I will give the link of that video in the description. You guys can go and compare both the methods. So now we are going to solve this problem by using the moment equals to F multiplied by D using the scalar product method. So we can say that the moment is equal to F multiplied by D. So F is the force and D is the perpendicular distance of the force from the point about which we want to find the moment. So again we are given that we are given this 6 meter boom and which is fixed at point A and the free end is supported by this cable which is acting from which is from B to C and the tension in the cable from B to C is 2.5 kN the problem says that the magnitude is 2.5 kN and we are required to determine the moment about point about A of the force so first of all we have to represent the tension so for that um, we have the tension from B to C like this. This will be the tension and this tension has a magnitude of 2.5 kN. So before going to apply this formula, we have to find the X, Y and Z components of this tension T which is acting from B to C. So we have to write this T as a Cartesian vector in terms of I, J and K. So we will write that T T vector is equal to T magnitude which is 2.5 kN multiplied by the unit vector. So the unit vector will be from B to C since the tension T is acting from B to C. And we can say that this is 2.5 and the unit vector is from B to C. The unit vector is the position vector from B to C divided by the magnitude of the position vector from B to C. Now we can say that this T is equal to 2.5 and now we have to find the position vector from B to C. So we can always find the position vector from B to C if we st start from B and try to reach that point C by moving along the X, Y and Z axis. So from B, to reach that point C, from B we need to travel 6 meter distance in the negative x. This direction is the positive x, so we have traveled in the negative x. So we will write that 6 meters in the negative i. So we will reach point A, and from point A we need to travel 4 meter distance in the, pos in the negative z. This is the positive z, so we need to travel 4 meter distance in the negative z. So we can say that 4 meters in the negative k direction. So we will reach somewhere here and from here we need to travel 2.4 meters in the positive y. So we have to travel 2.4 meters in the positive j direction. So this is the position vector. This is the position vector from B to C. And now we can find the magnitude of this position vector since this is the magnitude. So the magnitude is 6 square plus 2.4 square plus 4 square and then we must take the square root using the Pythagoras theorem. So we can find the magnitude. The magnitude is 6 square plus 2.4 square plus 4 square. This is equal to 7.6. Now the magnitude is, this magnitude is 7.6 meters. And remember that the units of this is in meters as well. So meter will cancel out with meter and ultimately we will, left, we will be left with the units of uh, force which will be kilonewton. So now we can say that this T is equal to, now we can divide each and every component by this magnitude and multiply by the 2.5, the magnitude of the tension T. 
So we can say that 2.5 into minus 6 divided by 7.6 i plus 2.5 into 2.4 divided by 7.6 j and minus 2.5 into 4 divided by 7.6 k. So this will give us t as a Cartesian vector. Now we can say that 2.5 into minus 6 so this gives us minus 1.973 Then we have 2.5 into 2.4 divided by 7.6. This gives us uh, plus 0 0.789 j and 2.5 into 4 divided by 7.6. This gives us minus 1.316 k. And the units are in the units are in kilonewton. Since here the meter cancels out with meter and we are left with the units of kilonewton. Now we have determined the units, uh, the components of that tension T. So we must represent that uh, components in the diagram. So let me represent that components here. And let me erase the, the rope here. Let's see, we erase this rope here. So now we will replace that tension T which is acting from B to C by these components, right? So we will have... 1 minus 1 1.973i. So we have one component in the negative x which has a magnitude of. So we can say that this is Tx component, this one is Ty component, and this one is Tz component. Or we can say the minus signs as well. So they are the x component is acting in the negative x direction, and the z component is acting in the negative k direction. So we can say that Tx is, we can show that this is our Tx which is acting in the negative x and we know that Tx magnitude is 1.973. Similarly, we have Ty, so this is our Ty like this, we can show Ty here. So this is Ty and we have Tz and Tz is also acting in the negative k. So we have Tz, we have one component in this direction. This one is Tz. Now, we, we are going to find the moment at A and we are going to find the moment at A about x, y and z axis respectively one by one using this equation, moment equals to f into d. So, now I am going to find the moment at A about the x-axis. So, as you guys can see that at point at point A, this is the x-axis, this is the y-axis, this is the z-axis. So, so, at A, we want to find the moment about the x-axis. Now, you guys can see that Tx is along the x-axis so it's not it's parallel to the axis since we want to find the moment at a about the x axis so tx is intersecting with the x axis and also it is parallel to the x axis so the moment arm if you want to find if you want to apply this formula for tx then moment will be equal to tx times d which is the perpendicular distance from the x axis since tx is lying on the top of x axis the perpendicular distance for Tx is equals to 0 from the x-axis at point A. So we can say that Tx is not going to produce the moment about the x-axis. So we can say, uh, in other words, if a given force or a component is parallel to an axis about which we want to find the moment, that force will, will not be able to produce the moment about that particular axis. So in this particular case, Tx is not going to produce the moment about the x-axis. So this means that the moment about the x-axis due to Tx is 0. Similarly, this Ty is also intersecting with the x-axis. So if a force is intersecting with an axis about which we want to find the moment, 
that force will is not going to produce the moment about the x-axis since this ty is intersecting with the x-axis its perpendicular distance from the x-axis is zero if this ty was somewhere here like this so this then this was the perpendicular distance this was the perpendicular distance like this this so this was some d and this was ty in that case this ty was going to produce the moment about the x-axis like this but now since ty is intersecting with the x-axis it's not going to produce the moment about the x-axis so we can say that the moment due to ty about the x-axis at a is not going to produce the moment and similarly tz is intersecting with the x-axis so it's not going to produce the moment about the z-axis as well so this is equal to zero so we can say that there is no moment at a about the x-axis or we can say that the x component of the moment at a is equals to zero similarly we want to find the moment at a about the y-axis we can say that this is the x component of the moment at a this is the y component of the moment at a so this will be equal to again to find this moment at a about the y-axis we have to consider each and every component one by one and apply this formula to each and every component so now as you guys can see again this tx is intersecting with the y-axis so its perpendicular distance from the y-axis is zero so we can say that tx is again intersecting with the y-axis it's not going to produce the moment about the y-axis so tx is again not going to produce the moment about the y-axis similarly this ty is parallel to the y-axis it's not going to produce the moment about the y-axis this ty can only translate this boom a b in the y direction if it if it was supposed to be free so ty can produce the moment about the z-axis in this direction this ty can bend the boom in this direction but it cannot produce the moment about the y-axis so the thumb rule is if a given force or a component is parallel to an axis so then that given force is not going to produce the moment about that particular axis so if this component is parallel to the y-axis it's not going to produce the moment about the y-axis so ty is not going to produce the moment about the y-axis now now we, we have to look for tz now tz is going to bend rotate this in b about the y-axis in this direction so we can say that this is going to be like this so tz is going to produce the moment about the y-axis and this tz is going to produce the moment about y-axis in this direction and if we curl our right hand fingers in this direction so the thumb will point out in the positive y direction so this means that this tz is producing the counterclockwise moment about the y-axis if the thumb is pointing out in the y direction this particular component is producing the counterclockwise moment so the counterclockwise moment is considered to be positive and tz times the perpendicular distance so the perpendicular distance of tz from the y-axis is this distance so this is that d for tz so tz times d and this is equal to we can say 0 plus 0 is uh, 0 plus tz so tz is now we know the magnitude of tz 1.316 we we only have to in order to use this formula we only have to consider the magnitude so tz is we can say 1.316 multiplied by d so this is the d 6 meters so 1.316 into 1.316 into 6 this gives us 7.896 so this is equal to 7.896 and since tz is in kilonewtons and this d is in meters so the units will be kilonewton meter so now we can say that the moment at a about the y-axis or we can say that the component of the moment along the y-axis at a has a magnitude as 7.896 kilonewton meter similarly we have to find the moment at a about the z-axis again we have to consider tx ty and z one by one and we'll look for this for formula now as you guys can see 
again this Tx is intersecting with the z-axis as well it's not going to produce the moment about the z-axis so again I'm repeating that if a component is intersecting with a given axis that particular component or force will not produce a moment about that given axis so Tx is not going to produce the moment about the z-axis Ty is going to produce the moment about the z-axis in this direction like this Ty is going to produce the moment about the z-axis in this direction and if we curl our right hand fingers in this direction so the thumb will point out in the positive z so this means that Ty is going to produce the counterclockwise moment about the z-axis so the counterclockwise moment is considered to be positive Ty has a magnitude of 0 0.789 so we will write 0 0.789 multiplied by the perpendicular distance so for Ty the perpendicular distance from the z-axis is again 6 meters so this is 6 meters we will multiply this with 6 and similarly this Tz is parallel to the z-axis it's not going to produce the moment about the z-axis so this is equal to 0 as well so this is equal to 0 0.789 multiplied by 6 this gives us 4.734 so 4.734 kilonewton meter so the component of the moment at a along the x-axis is 0 the component of the moment at a along the y-axis is this 7.896 and similarly the z component is equal to 0 so we can write that the moment at a is equal to 0 i this is 0 i this is plus 0 uh, 7.896 j plus 4.734 k so now again i am going to summarize this particular problem and the summary is you guys can use this particular formula and that particular force or component is not going to produce the moment if it is parallel with the given axis so if a force is parallel with the given axis it's not going to produce the moment about that particular axis and if a, if a component is intersecting with a given axis if we are going to find the moment of a of a component and a force about a given axis and if that given force or component is intersecting with that axis it's not going to produce the moment about that particular axis since the perpendicular distance of that component from that given axis is always uh, zero